Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Dr. Lara Kossover's Chiropractic Pregnancy and Children Consultation Lecture. Please pay attention. There will be a quiz at the end. Just kidding, sort of. Right, so let's start with health is your natural state, right? When your body is functioning normally, you have health. So how does the body work? Well, let's start with how we're created. Uh, we've come from two separate cells, from two separate bodies, each containing half of the chromosomes of every other cell in the body. And as they join together in a woman's body, they exponentially multiply and in less than a year creates a whole other human being, right? The intelligence that knows how to do this really amazing thing we call innate intelligence. It's a knowing within ourselves that knows how to do these really incredible things without ever going to school to learn how. Like how our, uh, our lungs know how to take in oxygen amidst the thousands of particles in the air to keep us breathing and keep us alive. How our heart just knows how to pump from the moment we're conceived until the day we die. Um, how our digestive system knows how to break down the foods that we eat and use what's good for us, get rid of what's bad for us. This is all examples of innate intelligence. So, how does the body work? Well, when we come out into the world from this warm, wet, sterile environment into this open air, non-sterile environment, there's two things that can happen. We can grow a little stronger or we can grow a little weaker. It all depends on how we're able to handle the stress that comes into our lives. So, what we need to know in order to grow stronger is we need three things are necessary. We need to have a positive focus, healthy lifestyle, and a clear brain-body connection. Examples of positive focus would be, um, obviously, to focus on the good in the situation rather than the bad. Um, even if the situation is really, really horrible, everything is temporary. So could, you could be grateful that uh, it's going to be over soon. Uh, focus on gratitude three times a day uh, when you wake up in the morning. You could think of three things that you're grateful for. When you go to bed at night, think of three things you're grateful for that happened that day. The more you express gratitude, the more things will come into your life that you will be grateful for. Healthy lifestyle. This one's obvious. We want to eat healthy. We want to stay away from uh, starchy foods, from sugars, uh, sugary foods. You want to drink at least half of your body weight in ounces of water, uh, fresh foods, fruits and vegetables, obvious things. Things you would, I would recommend you see nutritionists for if you really want to go that route. And of course, a clear brain-body connection, which is what I can help you with. In order for this to happen, your spine must be optimally aligned. So what's going to cause people to lose alignment? There's traumas, there's toxins, and there's thoughts. Also known as physical stress, chemical stress, and mental and emotional stress. Examples of physical traumas. There's the micro traumas. These are the biggest ones, I think. The repetitive stress injuries talking on our phones, texting so much, causing text neck, reversing our cervical curve, causing tension in not just our spine, but also in our heads. We have more headaches, we have more vision problems, we have more anxiety and depression because that subluxation occurs at the level of the heart and lungs. Prolonged sitting from like kindergarten all the way to our desk jobs that we're working at. We're sitting for most of our lives. This is a horrible thing for our spine. Um, the, the micro traumas are these little things that you know you, you do over and over again that don't give you a problem until one day it does. Major traumas, examples are obvious car accidents, slips and falls, pregnancy and birth, which are very happy things, are very physically stressful on both mommy and on baby, and we're going to get to babies um, soon in this lecture. Examples of chemical stresses, GMOs in our food, fluoride, lead, chlorine in our water, pollution in our air from uh, air, uh, airplanes, chemtrails, uh, uh, fumes from cars and trucks, uh, cigarettes, people still smoke, can you believe it? Uh, things like that. Uh, construction sites, these all create pollution in the air. Medications that we're required now to take for the rest of our lives. Uh, vaccinations, of which there just seems to be more and more being introduced every year. These are examples of chemical stresses. Regardless of your stance on vaccines, they are a chemical stress on the body. Uh, and drugs, whether it's over-the-counter, uh, prescription, or recreational. This is another example of chemical stresses. Uh, thoughts, which I think is uh, very underrated and overlooked 
aspect of what causes our physical pain. When we think about what is the world focused on, what is good and what is right, or what is wrong, and how to get away from it, right? And I mentioned this positive focus is one of the uh, biggest stressors. So when you go to a doctor, are you focused on what's wrong and how to get rid of it, or do you recognize that you've lost something you need? And what is that thing that you've lost that you need? Is you need a clear brain-body connection. So we're gonna get into some basic spinal anatomy now. Our spine is hollow, made up of 24 ring-shaped movable vertebrae. When it's stacked up on top of each other, it makes a tube. Inside this tube goes the spinal cord, which is an extension of the brain. The brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system, which controls, coordinates, and organizes every organ, muscle, and cell in the body. It is the first system to be created as we are being created, and from it, all other systems come. It is also the only system in the body completely protected by bone because it is the most important. So what do we take care of as chiropractors? We take, what's call, we take care of what's called subluxations. And a subluxation is when you lose proper alignment of your spine, you're partially gonna lose that brain-body connection, which means you're gonna lose normal function of your body and ultimately may lose your health. I hope this makes sense. Um, if not, we're gonna get into more detail about it. Here we have a chart of effects of spinal misalignments. As you can see, there's a picture of your spine and those little holes in between the vertebrae are called intervertebral foramen, where the spinal nerves come out and innervate the various areas of the body. If you have a subluxation in the cervical spine, you may have symptoms of uh, headaches, um, uh, eye problems, um, ringing in the ears, vision problems, chronic sinus infections, uh, stiff neck, thyroid issues. If you have uh, issues in the, the mid-back, the thoracic spine, as you can see, innervates pretty much every major organ of the body. So if you have a subluxation going to your heart and lungs, you may have asthma, irregular heartbeat. Uh, if you have a subluxation going to your pancreas, you may have issues with diabetes or blood sugar levels. If you have a subluxation to your stomach, you may have stomach troubles, nervous stomach, heartburn, ulcers, subluxation to the kidneys, to the um, small intestines, you may have digestive issues, bloating, gas. You can see where I'm going with this, right? Uh, the lower back, if you have a subluxation in your lower back, you may have a constipation, appendicitis, severe cramping during that time of the month, difficulty with reproduction, uh, hemorrhoids, sciatica, lower back pain obviously. So uh, if, you, uh, if your body was functioning normally with all of its parts working perfectly, would you have this or any other health problem? Probably not because normal function equals health. So if we can help you get back to normal function, then you can get back to health. That innate intelligence can express itself at 100% and restore balance to your body. So our goal is not to diagnose or to treat or cure or prevent any specific problem, even though that's what I call a happy side effect of chiropractic. But we're just here to make sure you have a clear brain-body connection so your body can function normally. And that healer within you can take care of whatever is ailing you. Um, I don't discourage people from seeing other doctors, other specialists, but if you are going to see those other doctors and other specialists, I do urge you to get adjusted in addition to that. Because are those treatments, are those drugs, are those other modalities going to work better with a clear brain-body connection or a subluxated body connection? So that is our goal, is to help your whole spine work better so your whole nervous system works better, and when your whole nervous system works better, everything works better, right? Now, BGI stands for Biogeometric Integration. This is the gentle approach that I apply to all of my techniques. It works with the sacred geometry of the body and it gently releases tension patterns through your system and clears the subluxation tracks that connect them all. Um, if you have questions about this, feel free to ask me at your appointment. Um, Clearing these subluxation tracks can help break any cycles of chronic pain that you might be in 
or any bad habits that you want to break. If you want to eat healthier, but oh, you just crave that ice cream at 10 o'clock at night. Mmm, chocolate, chocolate chip. So it, having that clear brain-body connection can help actually help relieve those cravings. I can speak from my experience on that. I don't got any research to back it up, but I speak from my experience. So the subluxation track essentially is if you had come in with lower back pain, I'm probably going to find a subluxation in your lower back. But I'm also going to find a correlating subluxation pattern through the other geometric structures of your body because your body wants to compensate to make sure you're level with the horizon. So when I work on you, I'm not just going to be focusing on the area of your complaint. I'm going to be focusing on your entire system because everything is connected. We want to clear that track from your entire system. And what this allows is for deeper healing to take place. It's like layers of an onion. Once you peel one away, another fresh one comes up. And it kind of brings a tear to your eye every once in a while. So the Webster technique is specifically for pregnancy. However, it can be done on anyone. It's very gentle and it helps to align your pelvis and release any constraint on your uterus. This will create more space for your baby to move and grow and it can also move your baby into a most natural position. I should correct that because what it does is when we create that space for your baby to move and grow, your baby will naturally turn in its most natural position which is usually head down. That's what my midwife told me. Babies turn. It's what they do. So what does it entail? Well, if you're pregnant, you get to lie face down on these delightful pregnancy pillows, uh, which will feel really, really wonderful. And I will go, I will gently adjust your pelvis by contacting the sacro tuberous ligament on whichever side is affected. Now, I should let you know that this ligament is right by your butt. So if you feel me poking around your butt, that's what I'm doing. If anything I do makes you uncomfortable, please let me know because I can modify my technique. I could still be gentle. If I need to be a little bit harder, I, I have uh, devices that can help me to do that. When I'm done adjusting your pelvis and that making sure your spine is clear of subluxations, I will have you on your back for a short time where I will contact the round ligament on the opposite side that I worked on. This will help to release constraint in your uterus, make sure that your uterus is sitting nice and square in your pelvis, and this will help your baby to have more space uh, to move and grow into its most natural position. So potential benefits of getting adjusted during pregnancy is you have a nice clear brain-body connection as your body is creating a whole nother human being. You will have a more comfortable pregnancy, an easier birth, and a shorter labor time. I can attest to all of these from my own personal experience. Um, I can tell you that the, I got adjusted every week for my first pregnancy and my son was born in an hour and 44 minutes. I did not make it to the hospital. I gave birth on the floor of my bedroom with two police officers and my husband uh, trying to tell me what to do, but my husband told me that he has never heard anyone scream at cops like I did and not get arrested. Anywho, then the ambulance showed up course and I ended up going to the hospital which is a whole other story for a whole other video we won't get into that but we are going to move on to why babies need to be adjusted on the bottom you'll see a quote from Dee Dee Palmer I don't know if um, I can't see my computer screen if my uh, picture is uh, in the way of this quote but it says the principles of chiropractic should be known and utilized in the growth of the infant and continue as a safeguard throughout life so should babies get adjusted? Yes, they should. Why? Because babies feel stress. They don't feel the same kind of stress as adults feel. They don't have to worry about getting a job or getting stuck in traffic or going to school or getting that assignment in on time or paying the rent or anything like that. But babies feel stress. Firstly, the diameter of our spinal cord only grows about 6% in our lifetime, which means it is as far as the diameter goes, it's almost full size. So it's going to take up a lot more space in a baby's spinal column than it would an adult, which means spinal misalignments, aka subluxations, are going to affect babies more than they're going to affect adults. And there's no obvious signs, there's no obvious symptoms, no obvious sign of trauma. The pressure of an adjustment for a baby is extremely gentle. We don't do any twisting or cracking or popping unless there's a significant 
uh, issue that the baby is having, then you might hear an audible. But it's very, very gentle because babies have no muscle tone. So we just have a sustained contact where we hold the bone, we just leave our fingers on the bone as, as gentle as the pressure I put on your eyeball and testing a tomato in the supermarket. And it's just a sustained contact. Sometimes the baby will start to wiggle and then it releases and it's just the most wonderful thing to feel that tension release. So why and when should babies get adjusted? Well, if we are ever to have one single adjustment in our entire lives, it should probably be right after we're born. And here's why. The atlas bone, which is the first cervical vertebrae on the top of our spine, is an odd-shaped vertebrae. It is a diamond shape with a big hole in the middle. The reason why uh, is because our brain stem dips into our spinal cord at that, uh, at that level. It dips into our spinal column, sorry. Uh, the atlas has no disc above or below it because it gives us all this wonderful range of motion that we can do. Now when the atlas gets subluxating during the birth process, whether it's natural, whether it's C-section, whether it's vacuum extractions or forceps, the subluxated atlas can put pressure on our brain stem. And our brain stem, among its many important functions, regulates our breathing, regulates our sleep cycle, and it regulates our digestion. You can see this for yourself right now. If you're sitting, stand, like, sit straight, take a nice deep breath, it's nice and easy. Now turn your head and try to do that same thing. You can feel the restriction. So if you can imagine a baby being born with its neck being twisted and pulled, how, uh, how easy do you think it's going to for them to take that first breath even? So after birth is probably the most important time for babies to get adjusted. If you're coming to see me when you're pregnant, your baby's first adjustment is included in your care. At least that first adjustment. I usually ask that you come in within the first three months because I know how hard it can be to get out of the house with a newborn within that first three months. And ideally at each milestone, which usually happens about once a month. So when baby starts to lift their head, when they start to pull themselves up, when they start crawling, standing, teething, transitioning from liquid to solid foods, walking, talking, pretty much any time they go through that tremendous change, you want to make sure their spine is in proper alignment. Then this is just a, you know, a short, incomplete list of stresses that babies feel from about birth to five years old. Uh, like I said, the birth process itself, whether it's natural or whether it's C-section, the change in environment from sterile to non-sterile. Now, if they're born C-section, it's going to affect the bacteria on their skin. When they come through the birth canal, they pick up this flora that kind of coats their skin, which protects them from the germs of the outside world. Uh, this is not, uh, th this doesn't happen during a C-section. Uh, also, the cerebral spinal fluid from the pressure on the skull as they come out of the birth canal is not triggered in the same way. So that cerebral spinal fluid that, that, that pours through the rest of their body and helps to wake up their whole body is kind of like a, a butterfly uh, breaking out of its chrysalis. You know, that struggle helps the, the blood flow to the wings so the butterfly can fly away. Again, they have no muscle tone. Uh, if they have a subluxated atlas, they might have a hard time turning their head, which would make it difficult for nursing. Uh, the, they might also have a, a reaction to the diet of the mother. If they're supplemented with formula, they may have a reaction to the chemicals in the formula, which could develop into colic, which is no fun. Uh, they can't communicate at all except by crying and making cute little goo-goo sounds. So if they're hungry, if they're thirsty, if they need their diaper changed, if they're too hot, if they're too cold, if they're sad, if they're happy, it all sounds the same. For at least the first six months. That's when they start making other sounds where you can kind of get what they're saying. Uh, babies put everything in their mouths as they're learning. It's just something they do. It's one of the ways we learn. It's that kinesthetic uh, taste and feel. Um, I remember telling my firstborn son to not lick the electric socket. Things you never thought you'd hear yourself say. Yeah, diaper changing, that's gonna happen at least five or six times a day. That's a huge physical stress on the spine. 
putting them in car seats and strollers, especially if they don't want to be there, could be like wrestling an alligator. That is a huge physical stress on the body. Circumcision makes me grateful I'm a girl. Teething, vaccines, again, huge chemical stress. They may have adverse reactions that you may not even attribute to the vaccines. Learning to walk, learning to talk, learning to potty train, communicate, bathe themselves, feed themselves. These are all so wonderful and so exciting. But at the same time, if you can imagine how stressful it must be, uh, if you had to relearn all those things, as, as thrilled as you might be to learn them, it would be extremely stressful mentally, emotionally, and physically. Growth spurts. Babies grow so exponentially fast from birth to five years old. It's truly amazing. Starting school, uh, learning to socialize, if they're even allowed to do that in school anymore. Uh, by the way, I'm making this video during uh, COVID-19. Um, I'm doing this lecture because for me to do this with a mask on face to face makes me very dizzy. So I'm making these videos so you can watch it and save yourself some time. Um, again, sitting is a huge thing. They have them sitting an awful lot in kindergarten. And if they have siblings, my goodness, if you felt all that stress, wouldn't you want an adjustment? Because I know I would, right? So my suggested care plan for pregnancy um, is ideally once a week. If you can make it once a week, um, it's just a great thing for maintenance to, make it, to help yourself feel comfortable in your body. Um, and I recommend investing in, in one of the wellness packages. Uh, this makes it just easier to, you could just come in, get adjusted and not really worry about billing or whatever. You can set up your appointments regularly so you just have to show up. And again, your baby's first adjustment is included. This website, icpaforkids.org, is a great site if you want some actual research about the Webster Technique. And also, if you want some more research on any other subject that I've covered in this lecture, and then some. It's a, a really wonderful resource. And if you can't uh, come to see me, I'm in Brooklyn, uh, then you can go to this website and you can find a chiropractor that takes care of, of children and takes care of pregnant women who is certified in the Webster Technique. So the four questions for pretty much everyone. What is wrong? Can you help me? How long will it take and how much will it cost, right? These are the four questions. Mind you, when I first went in to see a chiropractor, my first question is, why isn't everybody getting adjusted? This is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. And then I became a chiropractor. So what is wrong? Essentially what is wrong is you've lost your connection. Uh, the picture you see here, we call the uh, safety pin cycle. And there's a fancier name for it. I don't know what it is, and frankly, I don't care what it is. But you can see it's a nice closed safety pin. The brain cell and the tissue cell are in clear communication, so the body is functioning normally, and everything is uh, being handled in a healthy way. And here we have nerve interference, like an open safety pin, where there is a miscommunication and abnormal function. So if you can see the, the flashing GIF, or GIF, however you pronounce it, you have dis-ease, dysfunction, disease process, tissue damage, and then ultimately symptoms will show up. Now when symptoms show up, it's simply your body communicating with you. We've been trying to take care of this behind the scenes, but we need your conscious attention in this matter. Symptoms are a way of your body communicating with you. They are not necessarily an indication that what's going on is wrong. Um, a good story to tell to um, give you an example of what uh, this uh, good analogy is uh, the co two college kids part out partying and like having their drinking contest or something they're drinking 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 one of them gets super sick throws up all over the place and then wakes up with a killer hangover the next day and the other kid who was able to just drink to his heart's content didn't wake up the next day so who would you say was the healthier one of the two so can you help me? Next question. Can you help me? Yeah, I can help you, but I can help you to help yourself. Again, there are three things that are necessary. You need to have the proper focus. Focus on what is good and what is right, not what is wrong and how to get away from it. I know we see a lot of focus on uh, the news about uh, the death rate of COVID-19, which is tragic, over 200,000 deaths. However, there have been over 26 million people who have recovered. 
So, what are we going to focus on? Where do we focus? What do you think is the healthier thing to focus on? Of course, we want to be responsible, but we want to focus on what is good. Healthy lifestyle. You want to drink plenty of water, you want to eat healthy, you want to exercise, you want to have a positive mental attitude, and of course, get adjusted. All of these three things are your responsibility. The getting adjusted part, I get to share with you. You get to come in, you get to relax, and I get to take care of you. So I can help you to help yourself with regular chiropractic adjustments. So how long will it take? How long will what take? What are your goals? What are your health goals? How long is it going to take to stop that momentum of your health moving in the wrong direction and get it moving in the right direction? And we want to keep the clear brain-body connection there for the rest of your life. So what have we developed? A gold standard of care. Now we have four phases in this gold standard of wellness care. Phase one is the rescue phase. Not everyone starts at phase one. But this is, helped to, this is designed to help you get back some normal function. We want to stop that momentum moving in the wrong direction and uh, get it moving in the right direction. The, <coughs> excuse me. The frequency of care is every other day, ideally, for at least 12 adjustments. I am going to stop and have a sip of water right now. Not half my body weight analysis, but I did get this bottle to help me. Uh, I just have to, have to have two of these a day. Back to this lecture. So, <clears throat> these aren't necessarily rules. You don't have to come in every other day if you don't have time or if you feel you don't need to. I give people a lot of freedom as far as uh, how they want to uh, dictate their health care. These are just my guidelines. These are my recommendations that I recommend highly as a professional. So <clears throat> why so often at first? Because when your body is so used to holding you in a, uh, a particular position and all of a sudden you're in the correct position, your muscle memory is going to instinctively want to bring you back to that position. So the idea is we want to get your bones in proper alignment and we want to get your muscles in that memory of holding you in the proper position. So once you start to gain momentum in the right direction, we move into phase two. You start to build up an adaptability and handle most of the stresses in your daily life, build up some internal resistance, recover some normal function, and the frequency of care spreads out a little bit to about twice a week. Phase three, this is the repair phase. This is the phase where your symptoms that you came in to see me with are virtually either gone or on their way to being gone. And the deeper healing that I mentioned earlier and that I probably mentioned in our one-to-one -one conversation really starts to come up. Uh, your body is functioning normally, your frequency of care can spread out to about once a week, and this is the phase where you really start to feel the emotional release. You're able to forgive, you're able to let go of grudges, uh, let go of old relationships. Um, I had a friend come in to see me once who, um, after the adjustment, told me that he had broken up with his girlfriend a few months before and had a hard time getting over it. And after the adjustment, he felt finally uh, free of that. And uh, now he's in a, a much more functional relationship. Phase four, this is the rewards phase. This is where you really start to feel the benefits of your investment in your own health. You feel connected to yourself. You feel connected to your surroundings. Chiropractic becomes a part of your healthy lifestyle, just like drinking plenty of water eating healthy foods, getting enough exercise, and my fax machine saying hi, and uh, getting adjusted you can do every two weeks or so. You have a sense of knowing when your body is out of alignment. You sense like, I feel like a change coming, I should get adjusted, I feel I should be adjusted for this next meeting coming up, or uh, this trip I'm about to take. Usually for when you take a trip I recommend getting adjusted before and after, uh, just to make the travel more comfortable. What will it cost? That's the big question, right? I prefer to look at it as an investment because when you invest in something, you, you're you essentially putting in uh, something and you expect to get more back, right? You're investing in your life, you're investing in your health, you're investing your time, you're investing your energy, and you're also investing your money. So you want to get more back than what you uh, what you put into it. And I feel that for me personally, chiropractic, 
was the best investment I ever gave to myself. Um, so my vision for the future. Thank you for watching to this very last slide. Uh, this is where the quiz comes in for those of you coming in to see me. I'd like you to tell me what your vision of the future is. Um, the way I see it is I feel if everybody is properly aligned in their spine, they'll be properly aligned with their purpose in life. And when people are on the path to fulfilling their purpose and what they feel their, uh, their purpose in life is, then regardless of any obstacles or any uh, pitfalls that they might endure, they still feel like they're on the right path and they still feel the sense of growth uh, and uh, evolution within themselves. And I think if everybody was filling their purpose in life, then there would be peace because there would be inner peace and that's where peace really comes from. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like to set up an appointment, uh, do not call this number on this slide. You want to call 718-855-4850. Uh, Soul Shine Chiropractic Studio has moved to Element Natural Healing in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. Um, and we are very happy and excited to be a part of that team. So thank you for listening to my chiropractic lecture and feel free to call me with any questions or set up an appointment and I'd be happy to um, give you an adjustment uh, that will potentially change your life. All right.